Hello, this is the startup and the operating procedure for the programmable controller. Uh, programmable with CO2. First thing we want to do is find the on off switch, which is located on the right hand side of the box when you're facing the controller. Simply flip the button when the controller is plugged in, and it will turn on and it will give you a screen, and you'll hear the relays click. Um, the very first screen, it's going to ask us for our language. Uh, language setting, we'll want to make sure that it says English. If it does not, simply use the up and down arrow key. We can change from Spanish to English, and it says push next when done. So once it says English, simply push next. Now it's going to ask us for our security sequence. Security sequence on all the controllers is always up, down, up, uh, which is also found in the manual. Uh, make sure your customers have the manual so they can see what the, what the access code is. <clears throat> it will give you an accepted screen, letting you know that you entered the right one. Uh, if you didn't enter the right one, it will say failed. And it will ask you to re-enter the security sequence. First thing we want to do on the programmable controller is to tell the controller exactly the time and the date um, to get set. So we'll go ahead and hit clock. And it'll tell us to push clock to set the date and time. So we'll hit clock again. The first thing it's going to tell me is it's going to use, say use the up and down and left to right arrow keys to set the date and time. First thing I want to do is set the actual day of the week. The day of the week today is Saturday, and I can simply push the up and down arrow key to change that to each one of the days of the week. So I'll set it for Saturday. Using the right arrow key, I will get over to my date. Uh, the date today is August 19, 2006. So I'll make sure that it's 8 19 2006. And I'm going to press next when done. Now it's going to ask me for the time. The time is very important that the controller knows what time it is for when it runs its functions, whether it be ionize, oxidize. This is letting the controller know exactly what time of the day it is when you coincide it with your current pump timer or pool timer. So I'll make sure that it says 1.26 p.m. Next one done. And I can go to the top of the top of the screen and I can now verify that my date and my my date are now date and time are now set. Uh, the next step is to set the pool time. Uh, during startup, we're going to want the pool to run 24-7, so 24 hours a day. Uh, the default on the controller will have to set it for 23 hours and 59 minutes. So my time that I'm going to set for my pool, and I'm going to simply hit the pool button, and now it tells me to use the arrow keys, and it gives me my start time and my stop time. Uh, it says press next when done. My pool time right now is 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. If I would like to change that, I simply hit the up and down arrow key to change the times on the first start time. To get over to the stop time, I simply hit the arrow key pointing to the right, and that will bring me to the minutes, and then I can set my stop time, so 11.59. Then I'll hit next when done. So now my controller is set up, and it, the controller is recognizing that the pool is running for at least 23 hours and 59 minutes. So now I can go ahead and set up my ionization. Ionization is going to be the first most important thing when we're starting up the pool. So getting the copper up to get that protection in the water along with the pH and the calcium are our main concerns. So now I'm going to go ahead and put it in a manual setting by simply hitting the MAN or the manual button. By hitting the manual button, now the times for the ionization are going to duplicate the times for the pool. So now my ionization is going to take place from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. or 23, 23 hours and 59 minutes. What that gives me is a constant ionization so the copper can be now delivered to the pool. After the copper has been delivered to the pool, typically taking anywhere from one day all the way up to seven days to, to fully function to get the copper level up to the 0.4 to 0.7. Now we're ready to set up our controller for regular weekly maintenance. Regular weekly maintenance, maintenance means it's going to oxidize every day of the week and I'm going to set it up to ionize one day a week. So the next, next step after I've confirmed the copper to be a 0.4 to 0.7 is I'm going to hit the oxy button. Oxy is for the oxidation. 
So I'll hit the oxy button. Now it's going to ask me what time I would like to run the oxidation. The oxidation on your typical in-ground pool, anywhere from 15 to 35,000 gallons, is going to be 8 hours to 12 hours. Um, the given pool that I am working with today is 30,000 gallons, and I'm going to start it up for 12 hours a day. So I'm going to have it run from, again using my arrow keys, I'm going to have it run from 10 a.m. by using the down arrow key from 12. Using the arrow key pointing to the right, I'm going to go to my stop time, and I'm going to have it stop at 10 p.m. Now that I've confirmed that my 12 hours are on there, it says push next when done. Now that I've pushed next, it has taken my ion off and put the oxy on and the pool time on. Now the pool pump timer is going to have to go alongside with these times. So my pool time, which I'm going to set my pump time up to run the same time, right now it says 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Well, we're going to run the the pump for the pool for 12 hours. So now I'm going to simply hit pool. I'm going to set this for the same time. I'm going to go ahead and set it for 10 a.m. Using the arrow key pointing to the right, I'm going to get over to my stop time. and I'm going to set that for 10 p.m. Using the arrow key again, I can set my minutes. Now that I'm at 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., I'll hit next when done. So I've now told the programmable controller that I'm going to have water flowing through the chamber from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. It can be more than that, but we don't want it to be less than that. So we need to make sure that the pump, the pump for the pool is also running for that time. If it's not, we need to make the proper adjustments to whatever that current pool pump time is running, or we need to make the adjustments to the pump itself. For my ion, I would like my ion to run one day a week preferably a day before or a day after the day that we are testing the water. Uh, testing the water consists of, of course, the pH and the copper. For the copper itself, I'm going to go ahead and from the main screen, meaning it's going to read pool oxy ion, I'm going to go ahead and hit the next week button. The next week button is now going to bring me into the day run start stop. This is strictly for ionization and it gives me SU for Sunday it shows me that it's off, and it gives me the times. As long as it's off, the times are irrelevant because it, the, it's not going to run. So I'm going to test this pool on Friday, so I'm going to have it run on Thursday. So I'm going to simply hit next, which brings me to Monday, which is also off, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Once I get to Thursday, I would like it to ionize on Thursday, and this pool is going to take about 12 hours once a week of ionization to maintain the copper. So by hitting the up arrow key, I will turn Thursday on. Using the arrow key pointing to the right, I will set my times. I will set up for the same time, the 10 a.m. Using the arrow key to the right again, I'm going to set it for 10 p.m. So now I have 12 hours of ionization occurring on Thursday. This is going to be each Thursday of each week. By hitting next, I'll check Friday. Friday is off. Saturday is off. Now the next time I hit next after Saturday, it's going to bring me back to my main screen. My main screen now is completely full. I have a pool with a time of 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I have an oxy with a time of 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I have an ion with a 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. with a TH behind it, meaning it's going to occur every Thursday. On Thursday, the controller is simply going to turn the oxy off and turn the ionization on for that run day. Next, we want to go ahead and set up the, the actual CO2 feed. The CO2 on the pools, of course, is going to be something that will be different. We will have numbers that we will set up and plug in for each pool startup given the pool size, given its, its geography location, as far as temperature-wise, rainfall, things of that nature are going to change that number. 
To get into the CO2, I will go into the ACC button, which stands for accessories. Accessories. Now, on the accessories menu, there will be a lot of different features on here, which you can scroll through using the up and down arrow key. To not get confused with all the features, the very top feature, which reads CO2 feed 0400, is the feature that I am looking for. The, what it's telling me right now is that my CO2 is feeding for four minutes per day. I, would like, I want to change that, and I'm going to change it for 65 minutes per day. By using the arrow key pointing to the right, I can now access the CO2 options. It now tells me CO2 output enabled, CO2 is timed. Timed is what the function I would like it on. If I'd like to test my CO2 solenoid, if I'd like to test my CO2 connections to make sure that I, have not, I don't have any leaks, I can simply use the up and down arrow key to turn my CO2 feed on, off, or back to timed again. Now that I'm on timed, I can simply hit next when done, and now I can plug in my times, my time for each and every day of the week that I would like it to inject CO2. This particular pool is going to inject for 65 minutes, so by using the up arrow key, I'm going to now bring it up to 65. Now that I've reached 65, it tells me to push, push next when done, which brings me back to the main feature screen. And on the feature screen, it now reads CO2 feed 6500, meaning I'm going to inject 65 minutes of CO2 every, every day of the week. And now I can go ahead and hit next, which brings me back to my main screen. On my main screen again, the main screen is always the one with the pool, the oxy, and the ion. <clears throat> and right now, I am in my runtime. The way I can tell that is I have plus signs behind the actual numbers. The plus signs indicate that the, the actual function is happening, meaning that the pool is, is on and the oxy is on. If I want to see what it looks like with that off, all I need to do is simply go to pool set it outside of the current time, which is 1.30, so I will set it for 2 o'clock. Hit next when done. Both functions are now going to go to minus signs. Minus signs mean that nothing is running. The controller is, is not functioning at all when the pool minus sign is on. So if the pool minus sign off, the CO2 will not feed, the ionization will not take place, the oxy will not take place, and the box will not send power anywhere because it's sensing that there's no flow of water. To get it back on, I can just go back to pool, set it back to my 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., hit next when done, and since it's 1.37 p.m., I am in my runtime, and so I have plus signs on both. And that concludes the operation of the programmable controller, and any questions, make sure you read over your owner's manual and give a call to 1-800-ION-SWIM and we'll be happy to assist you.